Uh, I'm representing the CIOB and I'm chairing the session this afternoon and uh, we're having some problems with the uh, with the uh, with the mic so I'm going to use the handheld so uh, basically uh, we're looking at different aspects of, of BIM implementation uh, the first pre I, introducing our first speaker which is myself I've just returned from my world tour and uh, I have a best-selling book and the, that was a joke, it's okay. Um, so I'll just carry on and I'll just quickly run you through what the CIOB have been doing in relation to BIM in the UK. So just to tell you what we've, to tell you about uh, what we're doing, I'm just going to briefly talk through our approach. Uh, I'm going to talk about the BIM group that we've set up. Uh, what our BIM strategy is that we've developed that takes us through the next three years. And also, just leave you some contact, contacts where you can get further information if you want that. So basically, um, over the last 18 months or so, um, bearing in mind that the, the UK government construction strategy is probably about halfway through now in terms of BIM level 2. So we're heading towards the 2016 target for level 2 BIM. Uh, over that period, we've been getting involved in some of the main industry groups like the various BIM4 groups, BIM for SME. Um, there's a, a, a British Standards Committee called B555. Uh, there's uh, the, key, the Coordinated Projects Information Committee, which is responsible for something called UniClass. Uh, which, if you've come across it, is, is basically a, a digital classification system for BIM. Uh, and various other groups, and we've been working with those, with those people. Uh, we've set up a steering group, and I'll tell you about the members that we've got there. We've been working with various people in industry. And basically, the main part of the CIOB strategy is to provide support to our membership, uh, to chartered building consultancies and uh, chartered building contractors and also uh, provide resources. One of the key things we're looking at bringing it out is online training, online CPD, and we're hoping to, uh, fingers crossed still, we're hoping to launch uh, a, an online platform which will provide various modules ranging from uh, sort of various int introductory mod modules about BIM and what it means and what it is ranging to uh, slightly more detailed stuff, which is about BIM and the, say, quantity surveyor, or the construction manager, or the design manager. So there's going to be various online training. You get its typical um, online stuff. You get a, a slideshow, a voiceover. You get a little test at the end. And if you pass, you get your CP CPD certificate. And as a, as a re result from that, we're hoping to produce um, some basic certification and qualification. We're hoping to launch, we were hoping to launch the, an initial version of the, the online platform by the end of this year. I think it's likely to be early next year now. Uh, there's a few contractual things we're still trying to resolve. But basically the main, th main thrust of the CIB strategy is to support the membership and also to support the industry and we're involved with other training and skills bodies as well to, to help develop that. So this is, our, this is our BIM steering group. Uh, I've met a few times. We've got a few things on the, uh, in the fire. Um, it's chaired by David Philp, who's uh, already spoken at this conference, and he's one of the main leading players in the UK BIM strategy. Uh, there's various people there, ranging from some software vendors to national contractors, academia, uh, and various other people. So it's quite a... Uh, a broad spread of different people, designers, contractors, suppliers, industry organisations. And basically this is the, uh, the CIOB strategy which we've now developed, which takes us through uh, the next, next three years and in line with the UK strategy. So the, I the idea is to... Um, has this got a point? It has, hasn't it? Uh, it's, it's about people, process and technology. And it's about reshaping the construction industry into digital-enabled, customer-focused providers of built environment assets, empowering CIB members to integrate the creation, care, and use of the whole asset lifecycle. So 
the interesting thing about for me about the CIB, I mean, I, I'm an architect by background, but the um, CIB has a very diverse membership. Uh, designers, contractors, suppliers, project managers, FM people, clients even, all sorts. So I think the CIOB is one of, the, one of the few institutions that actually can speak for the industry and, and quite, quite validly, I think. So that's our overall strategy. And then basically it's a little bit difficult to read from the back. In fact, it's a bit difficult to read from the front, to be honest. But um, basically we've got it goes over the next three years, so we have here 2013, some deliverables, 2014, and 2015 is on the, on the next slide. For this year, we're a bit behind progress, but we're hoping to produce some very uh, simple documentation and, and guidance, um, and that'll be backed up by the online CPD stuff as well. Uh, we're just agreeing details for... Uh, a BIM guide, uh, a BIM handbook, which are the CIB construction management and BIM handbook, uh, which I'll be leading the authoring of. And um, we're just agreeing details with the publisher at the moment. And we're hoping to make that a very concise uh, guide to different aspects of BIM, what it's about and what it means to different people involved in the construction and delivery process. Uh, Basically, looking forward, we're, we're expecting things to, as the agenda moves forward, to become more integrated. So the idea is the CIOB becomes a focal point for some conversations around BIM and the industry at large. So leading an industry-wide integrated project delivery conversation and new ways of working. And we're already starting to do that. We've, we've become involved with the, with the BIM4 groups and the BIM task group, and uh, we're now beginning to provide a, a coordination and secretariat role for the supply chain BIM4 groups. Because there's lots of groups doing stuff, um, all doing different things, it's all very good work, but it's a little bit uncoordinated at the moment, and time's come to try and draw some threads together. And these are the contacts. Um, you can see me there on the, on the left, John Enon, and we have Eddie Tuttle here, if Eddie would stand up and raise a paw. Eddie's, uh, <laughs> don't be shy, <laughs> um, Eddie is, uh, leads on BIM and he's head of public affairs and uh, policy. Give us a call any time. I know um, it's, diff it's difficult here because I, I, how interested you guys over here are interested in what's happening across the water. I'm not sure, but if you want to talk to us about anything, we often come over here. Actually, we've been over into, uh, into Ireland several times now, uh, doing lecturing in various places and doing conferences. So we're happy to help in any way we can. Just drop us a line or get in touch, and we'll see what we can do. Um, okay, before I hand over to our next speaker, any, any questions about what the CIB doing, or do you want to know anything, or anybody got any, any questions? Just raise a hand. Have I bludgeoned you into silence? Is there anybody out there? <laughs> yeah, sure. How do we get, do you think that we're a long way behind the UK in terms of strategy? No, no yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I was going to swear actually, but I probably hadn't better do that. The, the, um, there's, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Um, we use a term sometimes called, called BIM wash. And I think even, the lead, even people that you think um, th that are the leading players, once you start to lift a few manholes and look under the bullet, bonnet, you find, yes, okay, they have some pockets of excellence, you know, some good teams or a good few people, but it's not necessarily spread across the whole part of their organisation. It's particularly true of some of the bigger contractors. Um, they say they can do a lot of things, and they probably can, but their resources are actually spread very thin or concentrated in certain, certain teams or expertise. And I, I think really... Um, I, I would pick up, uh, I'm, I'm not totally au fait with the Irish situation, but, the, but the, I would pick up on, on a couple of things that people have said uh, in some of the sessions before, is that because of your, um, 
your, your relative size, I think actually your prospects for adoption and being nimble and agile in a changing market are really, really good. And that is why you can be leaders in this. Um, what, what CETA are doing and other organisations here, you know, the, the level of understanding, the le level of intellectual engagement is fantastic. You know, it's okay, and we, maybe we have got the BIM choir here for the, for the last couple of days, but that doesn't matter, you know, because as long as people are getting together, thinking happy thoughts and being positive about this, I think that's really good, you know, because that's what it needs to make, the, to change an industry on the sort of scale we're talking about. This is the biggest thing since the Industrial Revolution. You know, it's even bigger than sliced bread, you know, so, 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 so I, I, I think what you guys are doing great and, and, and stick at it, I think, you know. Uh, um, so I wouldn't say you're behind, not at all, because I think the intellectual capacity you've got here is, is easily comparable. In some ways, um, it's more coherent, actually. Sure. Would it help the process here? I th I th yes, I, th I think it would because um, I think the, the lead the, UK, the government has taken in sort of England and Wales has made the difference uh, because it's put the pressure on at a time when otherwise I don't think people would have bothered because of the economic situation. Um, but because of the government push uh, particularly around adopting, you know, aligned processes, procurement, COBE, all that stuff. Uh, the people that haven't bothered with this stuff na up, up till now, they can see 2016 approaching. Um, they can see the messages coming out of the public sector and start to think, actually, I better start doing some of, that, some of this stuff. There is a document called PAS 91 which is about uh, guidance for public sector procurement and writing of, of prequal questions and tender submissions and that sort of stuff. And there's, a, there's something in there called Table 8, which has the guide, guide questions for BIM, basically, in terms of assessing supply, um, tendering and pre-qualification uh, pre capability. And that, those questions are beginning to come out now in tenders and prequals, and it's making people sit up and think. Like, you know, do you work to PAS 1192? Have you got a training program in place? Can you work in a common data environment? All this sort of stuff. And these are really, these are really hard questions and you can't just bullshit it, you know. And some local authorities, particularly in some government departments, are, are using these as a gate, so it's a pass or fail. Some are using them as just for information. All these sorts of things are beginning to ramp up the pressure a bit. So having, having a government mandate in place, I think actually is, is a key driver. Not to say it can't be done without that, because I think there's advantages in the industry adopting a BIM way of working anyway, but that's probably um, a slightly longer haul, isn't it? Because people have got to see the benefit. You know. Okay. Um, if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to move on, because... Uh